What's your name? Mateo. My name's Hayden. Good to meet you. What's up? You want to let me know what your thoughts are on abortion? Okay, so I feel like I'm pro-choice on this matter. I have various reasons, I guess. Um, yeah, I'd say I'm pro up to 20 weeks, 24 weeks. Um, but yeah. Okay, why 20 to 24, if I may ask? Because I feel like um, what makes us human truly is sentience and being able to like feel pain and that develops around 24 weeks. Um, and I find value in that, in like the fetus having conscience. I feel like that is a turning point for whether or not it should, a woman should be able to have an abortion or not. I still feel like um, abortion through all through nine months should be available by the definition of terminating a pregnancy. So I think a C-section after 24 weeks would be the better option if available. Okay. Awesome. I guess one question I'd have for you, since you said you believe that consciousness is really what makes humans valuable or have a right to life, or at least that's where your line would be in terms of abortion would be. There's plenty of animals such as pigs, rats, etc., that have more consciousness than a newborn infant that is human. So for example, if you look at levels of rational thought, memory, things like that, if you look at adult pigs compared to newborns, the adult pig is going to have a much higher level of consciousness in terms of rational thought and things like that. And the other thing I think is important to point out is consciousness, it's not like a light switch where it's on and off. It's more like a spectrum. For example, you and I are far more conscious now than we were when we were like two or even when we were one or when we were newborn or even at 28 weeks in the womb. So since consciousness exists more on a spectrum and we know that pigs and other animals have higher levels of consciousness, for example, than newborn infants, then in order to be consistent, wouldn't you either have to go vegan and not eat things like pigs and things like that or say it's okay for children to be murdered outside the womb at like one or two since they're not as conscious as these other animals that we eat, which is the position of, of some people in the world. They believe that since we, pigs have more conscious thought and we, we kill them for food or we kill them because we got to get rid of them for certain reasons that we should actually be able to get rid of infants since they don't have the, as high levels of conscious thought and things like that as, as those animals. So just curious to get your thoughts on that. Okay, so I feel like humans at one or two, like right after they're born, are able to live outside the body. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is a big, another big reason. Uh, up to 24 weeks, a uh, fetus cannot live outside the body. It It'd is be about 21. But about 21, roughly, yeah. but roughly, it like the medical definition for that is like being a parasite like medically, scientifically. Well, just, just to, to clarify on that. So a parasite by its very definition can't be offspring and it also can't be the same species as its host. So yes, it's true that the child is in fact drawing resources from the mother, but so is a born child, right? When a mother's taking care of the child, she's providing resources to that child as well. So it's not technically a definition of the biological uh, definition of what a parasite is because it is offspring and it's the same species as the host. Um, so it's not technically a, a parasite. Now, as far as viability, which you mentioned about the child not being able to survive outside of the mother, well, all of us are not viable in every environment. For example, if you or I were in underneath, submerged under the ocean, right? We'd both die, we'd drown. If we were in outer space, we wouldn't be able to survive in that environment. But just because we can't survive in all environments doesn't mean we don't have a right to live in the environment where we can survive in. And the child is viable from fertilization forward. It's just only viable in one particular place. So what are your thoughts? Like, what, yeah. what is the cutoff for you? Uh, so I would actually say that abortion should be criminalized as murder from the point of fertilization forward. Now, I think there's a lot of uh, back and forth as far as, okay, well, what does the term abortion actually mean? Mm -hmm. um, so a good example of a bill I would support would be called the 2023 South Carolina, Carolina Equal Protection Act. It never was passed, but it was written. Um, and if you look at the, the bill, the word abortion is actually never even defined in the bill. It's never mentioned once. And the reason for that is because all the bill seeks to do is provide equal protection for the preborn people, just like the born people. So just take the same laws against murder that apply to born, apply them to the preborn. There is a specific section in the bill, however, that says that if in order to save the life of the mother, or if, if saving the life of the mother results in the accidental or, or unintentional death of the child when all reasonable alternatives were exhausted or none were available, then no one's gonna be prosecuted. I think that's a perfectly fine section to have in there just for situations where you have a pregnancy that's causing life-threatening complications for the mother, doctors should do everything they can to save both lives. And if you have to induce uh, preterm delivery or you have to perform a C-section to get the child out early to avoid the death of the mother, and we don't have the medical technology to keep the child alive outside the womb and the child dies as a result of that, I don't think anyone should be prosecuted for that because doctors are doing everything they can to save both lives. Um, so yeah, that, that'd be where, where I'm coming from and what my position would be. So like, I'd still say that my position is like, that you wrote it up, um, that for me, the life of a one or newborn is not the same as the life of a eight week old um, fetus in the womb. I feel like that's just a clump of cells who can become a human, definitely. But like if, if, if it threatens the life of a woman or if the woman feels like she cannot live with a child, 
I feel like she has a right to abort it. So just real quick, one thing I would say is if you Google like when does human life begin scientifically, we know it's at fertilization. So it is a human being from that point. Now as far as life of the mother, I mean I kind of already, already <coughs> covered that. So I just simply don't think that you should deliver a dead child, right? The child's in the, the womb of the mother. In order to get the child out, you can either take the child out dead or alive. Right, I would just say, let's just take the child out alive and try to do everything we can to preserve both lives there. I don't think we should kill the child inside the womb and then deliver the child dead. Um, so that'd be my position on, on the life of the mother. But, you know, I, sorry, I think there might have been one other, one other aspect of what you said that I, I forgot. Just feel free to remind me or just continue the conversation. I don't know. I just feel like um, if 90% of abortions happen before 10 weeks, I don't see a problem with it. It would be a problem if like 90% abortions happen like by the end of the third semester, like a lot of, I feel like right-wingers like think happens. I don't think that humans definitely want to like wait till the, the baby is like all grown and then like abort it. I don't, I don't, that's not what I support, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I guess just on like the third trimester abortion thing, I'd say there's, there's about 10,000 every year that are 21 weeks or, or later in terms of abortion. Most of them aren't for medical necessity or anything like that. It's just the woman waited and decided she didn't want, want to kill the child. But obviously that's far less than the million abortions total. So it's not like it's a huge percentage. It's half, a, half a million per year. No, it's, it's about a million per year in the US. It usually it, is like I, I, between like five, 500,000 and 800,000 I found. There's been a couple years where it's over a million. I think last year it was right around. There was yard signs. I saw five hundred thousand. That's my source. So. Okay, um, but but anyway, setting aside whether it's five hundred thousand or, yeah. or a million, one thing I did want to ask is you said you think it would probably be better to to execute the human life that's at about eight weeks than sort of the third trimester. But I'm just kind of wondering what you think is substantially different because I know we talked about consciousness, but I don't think that 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 argument works just because we have other animals that are are as conscious as newborns or even more conscious than newborns. Because like going back before, I feel like an eight week is not able to live outside of the womb, while as um, a baby into the third trimester could be, could operate a C-section and it can be taken out. And if like medical care is applied, it can live. Okay, I, That's so, my difference. Okay, so would you say it's um, sort of like the child's fully dependent on the mother up to like the viability point? Can't survive anywhere else without the help of the mother? I guess so. Okay. I think unless science gets really cool, I don't know. That's interesting. One question, I, I haven't asked anyone this, but I'm curious to actually get your thoughts on it. What if we had the technology to actually make it so a child's viable outside the womb at zero weeks? So just like, fr like from fertilization, essentially, like we could get the, the child outside. Do you think the woman should still have the right to get an abortion? I mean, I've, I've thought about it. Mm. I don't know, because like, there's many like parts. Like, obviously, this is a very like moral issue, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, but I feel like still, if a woman is not able to sustain that baby, like economically, or financially, that option should should still be considered. I feel like still abortion levels would decrease, like drop down to like a lot, <laughs> definitely for sure. But I've thought about it a couple times. I feel like it could be a viable option if the, if the scientific research gets better and a uh, baby is able to sustain itself outside the, the womb at like zero weeks. I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I don't think it's like, no, I don't really see a problem with it. So just, we've, just humans have like defeated nature, I guess. And we've been to space, we've been to the moon, we've defied many laws of like nature. So I don't think like this is a big issue. I no, but so just to clarify, like if we did have that technology to where the child, we could sustain them outside the womb from the point of fertilization forward, um, and the woman gets pregnant, right? Would you say that she should have the right to still kill the child? Or would you say she has the right to separate it from her body, but she doesn't have the right to kill the child? Can you re like rephrase that? Yeah, so let's say a woman is uh, a week pregnant. Um, somehow she finds out, usually you can't tell until yeah, like two weeks. Like so let's say, let's say she two, she's two weeks pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the technology to allow that child uh, two weeks forward to develop, continue to develop outside of her body. Do you think she should have the right to actually kill the child and not just separate it from her body and allow it to you know continue uh, to live outside? And, being sustained by technology. I feel like it happens, it, it depends on what like the mother wants to do with the child, I guess. If she wants to like keep like burying it and keep like growing it and have like a son actually like alive. But if she can't sustain it, I don't, I don't think like it's a, she should, she should be able to like, I guess like still abort it. So, so isn't it really not actually about viability then? Isn't it really just about whether she wants it or not? Because in that situation, the child's actually viable at, at two weeks. She just doesn't want it. It's still it, a it, part of it, I feel like, if, if it's like something she wants, I guess, or not. So it is like a big part of it is like whether it's viable or not. But I feel like my position is still if the mother actually wants it or not. Okay. So if your position is whether the mother wants it or, or not, and I know that 
what I'm about to say I know is not your position, but I just want you to consider it. If a mother didn't want her three-year-old and she killed her three-year-old because she didn't want it, you and I would both say, no, that's wrong, that's murder, right? Yeah. But under your argument, you wouldn't be being consistent there because you'd be saying for the child in the womb, if she doesn't want it, she can execute it. But for the child out of the womb, if she doesn't want it, she can't execute it. So I mean, a three-year-old outside, like, if, like, technology actually works, uh, that's what I would imagine. It. If you separate the child into, like, an, I don't know, an incubator or something like that, wait until, like, it gets to nine years old, nine months old. Um, but still, like, for me, that is not, like, a life. It's not living outside. A three-year-old can't, like, leave, live, breathe properly. Um, a two, like, a, a two-week, like, you brought up the example in an incubator who cannot think who doesn't have a heartbeat who does, doesn't have the same value as that it's still like going back to the same point i guess interesting just one thing you mentioned there was uh whether they're thinking or have a heartbeat i don't think that we apply that same standard though for people who are born outside the womb there's people who are getting heart transplants at which a certain point they don't actually have a heart that, that's beating inside of them so there's a certain point where they actually have to force um the, the blood and the circulation with an external machine during the process of the heart transplant. But I think we'd both say, no, you can't murder them then. You have people who can't breathe on their own. They're on things like ventilators, right? right. They need external support. And we actually care for those lives and we, we love them, care for them. So I would just say, it, it doesn't seem like we can say the child at like two weeks, well, they're not thinking, breathing, because if we're using that standard, there's gonna be inevitably people outside the womb who fall under those certain same conditions. But in those cases, we actually say, no, we should preserve those lives. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like, low-key, we're just running off okay. a sort of hypo okay. hypothetical. Like, this is something that technology still doesn't have yet, and maybe won't have for the next 100 years. So, I feel like the conditions right now are as if they are, and I'm still pro-choice. Okay, well, hey, it was, it was lovely to talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too.